那么，其实，在音乐产业里面呢，现在有一种新的思维，就是大家都知道，呃，某一个歌手呢，他就算出了 CD， 但是他现在 CD 的销售量是非常非常少的。但是呢，一个歌手为了要在市场上继续往前走，他还是必须要出 CD， 啊，因为呢 ，CD 在某一个角色、某一个层面上来看呢 ，CD 就像一个名片一样，因为我有个新的作品的发行，所以我所以我可以到全世界各地去去去去举办。我的 concert， 我可以我可以有演出的一个机会，甚至呢，我可能因为我有新的作品出现，所以带给我其他这个类型的创作或是表演的参与的机会，包括可能是电影，可能是广告，可能是戏剧，任何的一个演出的一个机会。所以呢，在这种状况底下，唱片公司它可以，或是已经有唱片公司他们这么想，就是说我根本不 care 我的那个 CD 到底卖了几张。我根本不 care 我的 CD 到底有没有被违法的 copy， 或是被在网络上被传播。我真正希望的就是越多人看到、接触到我的东西，可以愿意来听我的演唱会。那么，所以我会认为呢，就是说，如果是在艺术的这个层面上来讲，或许也可以有类似的方法。比如说，以我的观点，一个非常好的一个视觉的东西，不管它是动画的视视觉，或是一个静态的一个视觉，其实都可以透过 mobile device 让更多人看到，更多人可以利用这个 mobile device 去取得这样子的一个一个 content， 它可以变成他的手机上的，或是呃电脑屏幕上的一个 wallpaper。那么，呃，除此之外，甚至还有可能就是提供给那一些呃游戏的制造者、创作者，这些创作者很多都是年轻、非常小的、非常独立的这些创作者，他可以利用这些作为他的一个 raw material， 然后去变成一种新的一种呃呃这个手机游戏的一种一种呃去激发他一种新的手机游戏的一种新的想法。那么，我觉得如果从商业的角度上来讲，因为有了合作，合作就会有一个 license 的一个概念存在。那我觉得这个一定是一个收入。那除此之外，因为有了合作，可以让更多人看到这个作品，所以呢，更能够影响大家对于这个作者或他的作品的认知，进而呢，去推动，去呃诱发他们在这个呃作者。呃，他在展演的时候，不管他是透过静态的呃展演，或是动态的展演的时候，他愿意来参与。所以，我我想要接下来问的是，比如说 D M 在 online 走了一段时间，那对于应用到行动装置，或者是说连接到这种。行动装置的行销的形态，呃，在 DM 的思考上有没有什么想要特别做的想做法 ？Yes， <笑> um, of course. Um, well, personally, um, running two galleries, running the online museum, which is sometimes a bit ne neglected because And、uh, working on this award as well,、um, you have to、uh, look at your long-term plans as well, not to spread out in too many activities. But I think、um, definitely it、uh, it needs some kind of、um, marketing on a basis of、um, similar like iTunes or something like that on this whole scene of which is software art. Leah, what you talked about, it's all applications, it's all software of distributing that. But more on a serious basis, so meaning filtered on a way that you have actually some quality. Of course, you know、uh, a lot of this field is、uh, things are going on which are just a simple effect and which wears out very easily and、uh, gets boring very soon. So、uh, I would love to do some more things in that area. I have some plans in that way. They are not yet、um, advanced enough to publish them.、Um, But it it would go in that direction, definitely. But on the other hand,、um, my 
core business and my major intention is, and that's what I like as well a lot about this job, is talking to people on a personal basis, meaning dealing with uh, collectors or customers or even just interested people who come to the, to the gallery on a personal basis. That's what I really like about it and to um, really twinkle some, or how do you say, um, trigger something in them that they change their point of view, how they look at things or how they look at art or how they perceive it and give them a new perspective and so that's what I enjoy the most. So that's, that's what I'm definitely going to stay on and concentrate on in the future as a major thing. 那個我想問很多的問題,那因為我們時間大概只有到12點10分,所以還有20分鐘,那所以接下來我想把這個寶貴的時間留給各位觀眾,所以各位如果有什麼樣的問題,請歡迎請教。well, I have a question that's directed to a wolf. Uh, because in, in your business, there's got to be a food chain. Well, because it's in, 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 in the arena of traditional art, painting, sculpture, and what have you, there are collectors, there are galleries, there are auction houses. And uh, the market somehow can be manipulated. <laughs> and uh, in your business, selling, collecting, present, uh, presenting digital art, how do you gauge the price? How do you put a name tag, I mean price tag, on, on a piece? Uh, can you describe a little bit about the food chain in your business? Thank you. Um, prices are really based on this. this um, prices are developed the same way as you have it in other fields. Basically, um, when you start off, you have lower prices, which are a few thousand euros, depending on the kind of amount of work which goes into it. And you need to see how much our potential customers are willing to pay for it. So um, you, you of course, have uh, to develop it in the... Ex it's totally the same as it would work with a painter. I have represented painters or photographers in the, in the 90s. When I started to have a gallery, of course, I made a living not from selling digital art because it was impossible to sell at the time. I had a gallery for three years in London with a partner, just digital art from 99 to 2002, and we paid money into the gallery every month because it was not possible to sell this kind of work. But I financed it with, a, with traditional media, paintings and so on and so on. So the pricing system is the same and the market works the same in this field like in any other area. Did I get you right or not? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Ah, okay. In, 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 in digital art, all, all it has is algorithm. So how do you, how do you gauge the, uh, the, the, the value of the art? Oh, so you mean evaluate, uh, to judge it? Right. Oh, of course. It's a matter of experience. If you are... Um, I'm very familiar. I know many of the pioneers from the 60s. I know them personally since 20 years. So if you know the history of it, that is the funny story of it. If I go to some museum or um, art fairs these days and see some new work by artists who obviously don't know their history, they repeat things which have been done 20 years ago by other people already much better in a deeper sense. So by experience, it's the same like you learn to judge painting. You, you don't, of course, everybody can go and look at a painting if he has experience or not and say, I like it or I don't like it. But that has nothing to do with the professional evaluation of the quality of it. Mm. So by experience and being, ev being able to um, compare it to the art history of it and being able to, uh, to judge the, the, um, what do you say, um, the quality how it was made. If you look at a lot of software art, as I mentioned before, a lot of it is really boring. <laughs> right. I mean, you look at it and you think, oh, here we go again, okay. You push your, you can push it there and give the blip blub, wonderful. Let it blub there, and so this kind of interactive stuff, which was very fashionable for some time, and which was taken on by a lot of artists because it gives the, the customer or the person who is looking at it the feeling that they can 
influence the artwork is that the first moment seems to be very interesting. But if it doesn't really contribute to the artwork in a sensible way, in the way of content, it's senseless. Like Casey Reese's work is not interactive at all. Now he has one piece in the new show, which you have in Berlin, which is interactive, interactive where it really makes sense. So, um, no, it's, a, it's a really experience plays a major role. And that's how you can evaluate and how I differentiate good pieces and from not so good pieces. And truthfully, I mean, with any other person, subjective, aspect, uh, subjective aspects play a role in it as well. I mean, that you have big artists on the market doesn't necessarily mean that they are the best artists, the ones who are selling big or are represented by big galleries. That just means these galleries have decided I'm going to make this one big, and he's good enough to push him up. It doesn't mean that he will survive in the next hundred years. That's a different story. So there's some subjective aspects come into it as well. One last question, <laughs> if you indulge me. Uh, uh, do you really uh, consider the museum collection as museum per se, or museum slash archive? Because say, for instance, there are good works of Jackson Pollock, they are, they are bad ones, and uh, the bad ones, they, don't even get, they didn't even get collected. And in your museum, because you, you have three categories you focus on, the museum, the two galleries, and the DDAA. And so in your museum, uh, because I, I, I went online, I, I did a little study, and uh, well, yes, I mean, in terms of archives, you have a pretty uh, amazing- It's an archive. Oh, okay. It was, it, 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 uh, I mean, we had, and we still have an advisory panel there, which is selecting, but it's selecting the artists. The purpose was not to choose the best work available. The purpose of the online museum was to make curators and professionals aware of the history of it. A lot of the early work, I mean, if you look at early photography, the really early photography is not um, aesthetically so exciting. It is, uh, collected by museums because it's, it, it shows the starting point. It's similar with uh, digital art. The early uh, digital art pieces very often were done by technicians, people who were not aesthetically trained. Some were lucky and did something nice, some were not that lucky and it was just an experiment. Yeah, Like this, um, the two Germans I mentioned, Frieda Nack and Georg Nuss, who did this, had these first exhibitions in Germany. From my perspective, Frieda Nack, both were not trained. They were both not aesthetically trained. Frieda Nack did, did some fantastic stuff. I just got a very old piece back from 65, which I'm offering to a museum, and it's really nice, it's convincing. Georg Nees, at the same time, did stuff. Okay. I mean, he was a pioneer, fine, acknowledged. I mean, have other questions. Uh,其实因为我们今天很大的一块没有去分造型艺术或者是表演艺术,那所以在表演艺术performing 可以让张惠妹以及我们很久没有看到她CD了,但是她还可以很丰富的存活。周董或者五月天,他们主要的来源也是演唱。那所以,从performing art,那从你的角度来看,digital,我们今天谈digital,那是工具,是载具,那个是观众跟创造者两端不同的东西。所以从你的角度，你认为艺术家的创作过程被 
回到比如说两百年前的这个古典音乐的那个逻辑啊，一个一个就是一个非常好的一个呃 violin 的 violist， 好，他就再好再好再好呢，就好到非常极致的状况底下呢，他就绝对是非常有价值的。那么，所以呢，在整个 perform performance 里面呢，就是一个非常好的一个 player 呢是非常重要的。但是今天呢，在现在的科技的范围里面呢，没错，任何一个 singer 呢，他唱的如果 pitch 不准，好，或是呢，他没有办法一口气把它整段都唱得非常完好，我们确实可以用工具的方式来拼贴，或是去去移动它的音高。但是说老实话呢，以我们专业的角度来看的话，哈，那是一定能够被辨识的。那么这个呃，因为我呃，对我来讲，我是有这个经验，就是在音乐的这个这个领域啊，我们可以很清楚的感受得到，就是说一个非常非常好的一个表演呢、啊，它是它一定是没有被剪接的，而且那一种精神面的东西才能够真的被传递出去。所以我认为，在商业市场或许可以用那种方式来帮助，但是真正最最有影响力的音乐，不是那样子可以做出来。不仅仅是 singer 了，包括任何的 guitar player、drums 啊，都是一样的。